the more apps you install on Linux, the more that dot files, mainly hidden configuration files, start to clutter your home directory. Now, there are two main reasons for this. One of them being that, from the developer's perspective, sticking everything inside of a folder in your home directory is just easier to deal with. Secondly, it's part of an older standard where the home directory was the correct location for these files to live. Now, the way that most people want it done nowadays is through the XDG base directories, which I've talked about at length in this channel before, so I'll save you that whole spiel. But basically, it is a standardized location for things like your app config files, the data files, the cache files, and that's why you have things like your dot config directory or your dot local slash share and things like that. Obviously, there are many apps that don't follow this specification, things like Firefox and Steam being great examples with Mozilla refusing to fix the issue and then Valve not acknowledging the issue altogether. But even the apps that do follow the specification, a lot of them by default will still dump things in the home directory and then expect you to know that you can move them. But the problem is that while a lot of applications are fairly well documented, there is an equal amount or maybe even more so where the documentation is an absolute mess and you have to dig through like wiki pages and forum posts to find out one, if you can fix it and two, if you want to fix it, where it even needs to go. But luckily, there is a project here to save the day. This is XDG Ninja. Basically what it does is will parse out your home directory looking for your dot files or dot directories. And if it knows about that file, let's say with your dot zsh env, it will then tell you what you need to do to actually fix it. Or if it's something that can't be fixed, like say your yarn rc or thunderbird, for example, it will then say, hey, this is unsupported. This is why it's unsupported. If it knows about that, and if there's like an issue or something like that, it will commonly go and link to it. Now, it's important to note that this is just a summary of what the user can do. It doesn't actually go and fix anything for you. The reason for this, and there are alternatives that do do this, the reason why it doesn't is because if the information is out of date, let's say maybe something was fixed, maybe it doesn't work anymore, or maybe they changed the directory or things like that, that could lead to some very, very serious issues, especially in my case where there's like, I don't know, 30 or so extra things that shouldn't be in my home directory. If it went and moved stuff and then, I don't know, even 10 of them were wrong, that would be a massive pain to repair. The funny thing about this application is I cleaned up my directory like maybe six or so months ago, but I guess through using stuff during my videos and maybe things that I missed last time I was fixing stuff, it turns out I still have a bunch of things that I can get out of my home directory and I would never have known without this application. Now, if you're like me and you're using a fairly standard terminal color scheme, there is one part that is kind of counterintuitive. Anything that can be fixed is going to be in red. Anything that can't be is going to be in yellow. I have a feeling this is designed around the developer's color scheme and they probably have it set up in a really different way. But what I would personally do is anything that can be fixed should probably be green. And then anything that can't be, maybe make it yellow or red. Yellow if it can be fixed like temporarily, like with Yarn RC, or red for something like Thunderbird, where it literally cannot be fixed altogether. Also, the rendering you're seeing here is being done with Glow. I've now gone and uninstalled it, so if we go and rerun the application again, it's going to look a little bit like this. I would highly recommend you install one of these supported highlighters. Glow is what the output is built around, but you can use Bat, Pigmentize, or Highlight instead. The main reason for this is because the output you're seeing is actually built around using Glow. So you're going to see things like these bash markers here, which is what is being used to indent it in the Glow output, or these underscores here, which also have meaning in that as well. One other neat touch is if you forget to set any of your XDG variables, it's actually going to give you this warning at the top telling you that it's not set, and also what it probably should be set to. So in the case of XDG State Home, which I forgot existed before I started planning this video, it should be set to home slash dot local slash state. Now the point of the XDG directories is they're supposed to be movable, so you should be able to have it anywhere on your system. The reason why it's recommended to go with this default value is because a lot of applications will actually use the XDG directory, but they'll actually hard code the value. So they'll hard code the default location, so if you move stuff, it doesn't actually move with it. 
Anyway, let's go and fix one. I think the easiest one to do is probably going to be this pulse cookie. So according to this, I should be able to place it in my XG config home slash pulse slash cookie. Now this is set to dot config. So let's go and try that then. So that's going to be the pulse cookie down here. Let's go and grab this file, go into my config directory, go down to the pulse directory. And then, oh, there's already a file being generated in here. So I guess I can actually go and uh, delete that file. That must have been a legacy file from a couple of versions before they fixed it then. And if we run it again, now that the file is gone, it should no longer have that inside of the list. And as we can see, that seems to be what it's doing. That doesn't guarantee the problem has been fixed. The information in the database could be out of date, but at least it's not being parsed by the application anymore. One thing you might be curious about is all of the files that may be checked. Now, obviously, the only things that are being listed here are things I have in my home directory. But if we go and run the application and pass in either dash V or dash dash no dash skip dash OK, it's then going to show you every single thing that could possibly be checked. And I mentioned earlier about using the color green for things that can be fixed. This is actually where the color green is being used. I don't think it's the best use of the color. I think if anything, maybe just make these white, I guess. Or if you want to give them a color, maybe make it so that things you can fix are green, things you can't fix are red, and then things that just don't exist, those are going to be set to yellow. I'm just nitpicking the color. It's not really a big deal. Now, most of the information for this application, according to the GitHub, is coming from three places. One, the ArchWiki page on XDG base directory. So this page right here, which has most of the information. And I think I have shown this in a video before. This has things that are fixable, things that aren't fixable, things that are hard coded, and things like that. There are also previous applications like Antidot, for example, which was one of those applications which would automatically fix things for you, which I don't like as an idea, especially when things will change over time. And then the rest of it is basically from user contribution. So down the bottom of the application, it actually tells you this right here. If there's anything that you know can be fixed basically, but isn't in the application, please do go over to the GitHub and then post about it and then it can get fixed. And if you want to help out yourself, there's actually a tool on the GitHub to generate the files that are used to recognize the fixes. So you can very easily go and make the fix yourself. An application like this can only improve through user contribution. There's only a set number of applications the developer actually knows about. So if you use something that isn't on the list, or maybe you're a new developer making some new piece of software, I would highly suggest you go over and make sure that software is actually supported. Now, this isn't a tool you probably need installed all the time, but whenever you feel like you want to go and clean up your home directory, because there's a bunch of dot files there that you feel like can probably be fixed, XDG Ninja seems like the best way to go about it. So let me know. Do you care about your home directory being cluttered, or are you one of those people who actually hide the hidden files and then don't even acknowledge the problem? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, join and bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Optum Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.